Hello dear students, welcome to the lecture 16 of Responsive Web Design with ASP.NET 5 and MVC Pattern and Bootstrap 5. Uh, so I am hoping that this will be the uh, last lecture of this course. I know that uh, it took uh, more time than it is supposed to be. Uh, but this uh, lecture is extremely important and also a hard one. Uh, believe me, this course. So uh, we have left at forms in the previous week, if you remember. And as usual, we will start with uh, cloning our uh, uh, latest uh, lecture source code. Okay. Uh, let's start with uh, cloning lecture six, uh, 15 as lecture 16. All right, and let's uh, open it and rename it. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's open the CLN file. Okay, uh, so we have left at forms, uh, which are a really important part of uh, web development, uh, as you know already. So I will um, rename project into lecture 16 as usual. And yeah, okay, it is done. And let's rename uh, these two. Okay, I will continue with uh, lecture uh, 15 index page. Okay, so let's start reading it. Forms. Examples and usage guidelines for form control styles, layout options, and custom components for creating a wide variety of forms. So there are form control, select, check and radius, range, input group, loading, uh, label. Form control style textual inputs and text areas with support for multiple states. Select improve browser default select elements with a custom initial appearance. Checks in radios use our custom radio buttons and checkboxes in forms for selecting input options. Range replace browser default range inputs with our custom version. Input group attach labels and buttons to your inputs for increased semantic value. Floating labels create beautifully simple form labels that float over your input fields. Layout create inline, horizontal, or complex grid-based layouts with your forms. Validation validate your forms with custom or native validation behaviors and styles. Okay, so. Overview. Bootstrap's form controls expand on our rebooted form styles with classes. Use these classes to opt into their customized displays for a more consistent rendering across browsers and devices. Be sure to use an appropriate type attribute on all inputs, example, email for email address or number for numerical information to take advantage of newer input controls like email verification, number selection, and more. Here's a quick example to demonstrate Bootstrap's form styles. Keep reading for documentation on required classes, form layout, and more. Okay, you see that how clean it looks. Uh, now I will show you. 
uh, the difference between uh, bootstrap and non-bootstrap version so if you remember from the previous lecture uh, we had a test html which was a um, static page uh, to compare them their look actually okay and index uh, html is here okay okay let's run our application okay so you see uh, the text box is taking full space by default uh, it has some let's say help uh, form text yeah form text uh, as label as here as you see form text uh, it is pretty useful if you ask me it has a, a form uh, input title like here and it has uh, has a class of form label and then there's password box it is like this you see you can click it to see it okay my computer is having hard time right now okay oh it is gone and it has some uh, checkbox like this and you see you can also click on uh, this text to check it as well so it is checkbox type and it has class as check me out they are inside a form check uh, class and mb3 uh, is breakpoint related stuff okay so this is our form it is taking full space and uh, this is the uh, form text message and here you have checkbox and submit and let's uh, see test html um it was i think it was inside static okay static pages here here and you see this is the default form now compare how they are looking differently in both uh cases by the way if i don't want this to be taking full span i can add a class as i think um let's see maybe call tree yeah let's try that so it should take only uh 25 percent of the screen okay why did it generate an internal error okay this is interesting form class let's look from our uh, database as you remember we were logging all of the uh, errors so let's open the sql what might be the problem it is taking some time by the way i will restart uh, meanwhile okay Oh, interesting. You see, waiting computer is taking a lot of time. If you don't have a fast computer, then you will spend, I say, waste a lot of time uh, when waiting your program to run. Okay. 
So here we have PMS MEC school and from MEC okay page is getting loaded okay now you see it is not taking full space it is taking only 25 percent uh, and yeah it is working and i can also take this inside of uh, a container so it will be centered i think that would be even better let me t test that uh, so this container will be like this I will remove this and I will add a div here like this okay and when I refresh the page let's see if it will give error again and select all from what was our table name okay it is getting loaded okay working now you see now it is also centered and yeah taking only three for a space and let's compare it with the static test okay delete this two and yeah and you see the difference how it looks different let's see how it looks on internet explorer as well so this is Internet Explorer and this is Chrome. You see like this. There's not even display password on uh, Chrome right now. And uh, let's see the bootstrap version. Okay, yeah, that is it is not visible here as well. Okay, let's continue with the tutorial. Uh, you see there is form text. Uh, like this and there is we can also have okay let's see um column auto password help inline form text like this and you can have password help line like here um yeah let's note them Okay, um, lecture 16. And, uh, let's wrap. Okay, let's wrap five. And we have some uh, important he things here. Okay, what are form label? and we have form control yeah that is the regular thing form control form text and you see these are the classes uh defined for this thing there is form checks check form check as you can see and we have form check input form check label you see these are the uh, regular classes that you will use for formatting your forms okay form text um form control okay there is also disabled forms you see uh, for disabled form you just need to add disabled like this and you see they are not uh, checkable mm. okay classes form classes for and then we have okay disabled forms here oh let me save this as lecture 16 disabled forms and disabled fields you see for disabled it just adds um yeah a field set you see when you define a field set as disabled it gets disabled entirely so let's also put this okay um 
here's okay i mean here's so i will also uh, put it inside same okay division like here let's format it okay all right let's add it to the static page as well Okay, let's refresh the both pages. Okay, so the disabled inputs are like this. You see disabled field text and it looks like this on the bootstrap. You see how much better it is looking by default. Disabled field set, disabled input and this is the default disabled field set of the uh, browser there is also accessibility for accessibility you can add let's see okay it's not very important and uh, yeah so we have form control another uh, okay uh, tutorial here we have you see form label not nothing different here yeah and we have sizing with form control large form control small like this you can set the size of the uh, form control okay form control sizing eg form control large okay there is disabled there is read only so what is the difference between read only Okay, we read only we can click it but we can still uh, select it i think and there is read only plain text such as this one yeah so input read only and there is read only so you see i cannot change it but i can copy it okay um so read only plain text yeah and uh, what else we have we have password read only text here you see i cannot change it uh, so we read only it has added um you see plain text uh, extension to the class of the form control nothing else and there is file input like this you see it will uh, open file selection multiple file input when multiple file i can select multiple and then there is default file input with default file input i can select only single unit and disabled file input and small file input small file input is just uh, the input is small and there is large this is an important thing so let's add it to our container here such as this one okay let's refresh it and okay uh, it will not refresh it yet oh i did that add it to the test first so you see they all look same and really bad if you ask me by default so let's add it to the uh, index HTML as well. CSS HTML actually. And let's refresh the page. Okay, I can now pick uh, the files like this. And yeah, they are looking great and correct. So let's continue so let's also notice file input multiple file input large small file input and what else there is there's color picker you see it's pretty useful so let's copy and paste this as well okay mm, so let's add it here and on this html as well here okay let's refresh uh, 
yeah color filter is working and how it looks it is looking like this and so there is the data list so oh interesting i have never used this before so when i type something they appear and i can also use uh, the arrow here as well so it is called as data list it has options okay and color pictures and data list basically it is using whatever available in regular browsers but they uh, it's uh, the bootstrap makes them better uh looking okay and then the select options you see like this and the sizing of select like this there's multiple attribute selection like this there's disabled okay and yeah select and sizing of select and multiple select with multiple attribute here so you see you just add multiple to the multiple uh, to the select inside the select here so this is not the thing of a uh, bootstrap this is the thing of the html uh, you just add multiple to the uh, actually you don't need even add anything to the it's class it is automatically getting it from multiple and there is the label uh, as the select as here okay um, there is nothing important and then there is checks and ra uh, radios like this and there is intermediate checkbox and there is disabled and there is radios and then there is switches okay i would like to test this switches in both uh, cshtml and test html compare them how they look so these are the switches disabled and uh, let's see okay you see switch is not even working in uh, default so it is something that is done with a uh, bootstrap um yeah so let's add them okay checks and we have intermediate Okay, intermediate episode class when manual set via JavaScript, there is no available HTTP. Ah, I see. So this is a set with JavaScript and there is disabled, there is radios and there is switches. So the switch is not even available in HTML. Okay, and there is default stack it like this and default radio there is inline you see it is looking pretty good yeah for inline we add just inline word to the end of the class you see form check form check inline so they are um, stack it you need to write both of them there's checkbox and there is four label okay this is a really good one i will add this to here let's see the difference between that in test html and here okay so it is not looking good and working correctly and here yeah you, do you know why we have these borders because in the previous lecture we have added borders to all of our divs um, as here which is under border class that is why we have extra borders 
Okay, walking. Um, line here. And there's without labels. We can also define them without labels. And we have toggle buttons. Okay, how does it work? Okay. Toggle is doing nothing. Oh, I see. So now it is check it. Yeah, I see. Okay, radio toggle buttons. But I wouldn't use this because it is pretty confusing. Okay, toggle buttons and use it radio toggle buttons. Alpine styles like this. Oh, this is better. You see, when it is check it, it, it changes the color. Yeah, this is the better approach. So let's add this inside our container. And let's add it to the test HTML as well. Okay, let's refresh. Okay, it is working. Yeah. Let's see. But it only allows check one of them or something. Let's see the code. input class input type radio so when you set radio you can also only uh, check one of them like success or danger okay as you can see and this can be both check it or not um, and radio buttons uh, works with groups okay let's see Okay, then there's range. Use our custom range input, so the range is like something like this. Okay, so I don't think it is, I'm not sure though. Yeah, let's test it. Let's test if it is working with uh, test HTML and next HTML. Yeah, range is still working, but it is looking like this. And here, okay, it is looking like this, much better. Actually, I like it, this blue color. It is not available in here. Maybe there is a class for that. Oh, you see now it has five splits with min and max. Yeah, and then you can also set the step like uh it is 10 percent right now yeah so let's also add that range in lock steps okay then there's input group okay um so something at example com your vanity url like this dollar like this Username server. Okay, it works as input group and input group text ID. And then there is input. So they are becoming a group of input, you see. So let me show you what does that mean. I will change its behavior with an example with copy paste. So the first part of input group i will remove the input group class here and let's see how it looks ah we have an error why let's restart by the way we were going to check the error so here we had error rocks and here Okay, what is the error? Message, so let's see it. Okay, one or more completion periods occurred. 
is not by the start of form. Hmm, interesting. So it says we have an error. Ah, I see. Since we have used add character, uh, it's breaking our code. So I just need to change them like this. Yeah, now it should work. By the way, I think I know the reason of why the computer were slower at the beginning because you see uh, it did install some updates and it has slowed down the computer in the beginning. Sorry about that. And then there's also wrapping. And yeah, what is the difference between wrapping and input group? I think it is about lower resolution or something. Oh, I don't see. And there is checkboxes and radios. You see, you can also uh, input group them. And then you can have multiple inputs like this. Yeah, it is extremely useful. There is multiple add-ons. Modern add-ons like this. For add-ons, you just add button outline secondary and input. Yeah. Yeah. Buttons with drop down. Oh, this is really cool. So for buttons with drop down, we add button outline secondary and drop down toggle to the button. And then we start as an unordered list. And you can even have a divider like this, and this is separated in here. And you can even have segmented buttons like this. Achieving this is extremely uh, hard when you don't use um, Bootstrap. So let's compare it with Static and Bootstrap, and let's see how they look. Okay. Oh, it is taking a lot of time to recompile. Okay. Uh, yeah, they are working, and let's see the classical test. Oh my god, yeah, as you can see, they are completely different, not even anything related. Uh, you see, you so you see action toggle drop down, and you don't see anything like that here. There's action, another action, something else, and separated link, and they are being displayed like this. There are two checkboxes, I mean, input boxes. There is action and toggle bro uh, toggle so you see how different they are looking when you don't use bootstrap okay so input group is extremely important part of bootstrap because we work with a lot of inputs uh, from users input group Oh, I see. So this is the wrapping. There is also sizing, like small, default, large. Okay, we have checkboxes and radios with input groups. We have multiple inputs. Okay, we have multiple add ons. Uh, we have button add-ons like here so you see you just need to have an idea of what options you have you don't need to memorize this you can just return this page and look how they are done but to be able to do that you need to have an idea of what is available and what is not segmented buttons and then there is custom forms 
so let's see the custom forms okay here you see we have options like this and here this we have button and here like this okay so this is custom select and we have custom file input you see we have upload button here actually do we need to click upload so upload is just a text it is not a button however choose file is a button and then you can have upload button here i think this is the button yeah you see so you can pick file and click button here okay custom file input yeah and then we have floating labels oh nice when i click it you see how it changes so we just add floating here to the div it has and it is automatically doing everything okay it's very cool let's see how it looks with uh, regular html and bootstrap okay so this is how it looks with uh, regular html email address password like this and this is how it looks with uh yeah this is awesome and then there is text areas okay so the text area is something that you can change size like this loading text area okay so you see this is the loading text area and then there's select it's loading okay um loading labels loading text areas loading selects and then there's layout so you can make them as uh, different columns like here okay then there is layout okay okay layout um, so we already have uh, idea about layout we have margin utilities um so what is important here is row column text gutters we already seen all of these you see row uh, g3 and g3 is let's see i'm still having some problem to remember all of this i think it is inside here perhaps So P3 is, what is this, let's see, okay, so this is the page we are, so, yeah, okay, so it's a grid system, and grid options, yeah, we know them, and what is G3? Okay, it is not even here. Okay, it says G. Okay, got us all this. So gutters are the gaps between column content created by horizontal padding. Hmm. Okay, okay, I just remembered it. So it will set the 
be a space between these two um, let me show you so you see it will take some time to memorize all of them the first one will be g6 and the second one will be g3 actually i will make this g12 okay and when i refresh the page okay you see there's a huge difference between there will be actually but let's make this as six column first okay it, uh, the difference between these two is bigger than other one but i think it is not being visible because maybe g3 is not but it what is the maximum g5 okay there is g5 is that g6 no so g5 is maximum okay you see the difference between these two this is g3 and this is g5 yeah now working and so is there anything different horizontal form there's column classes there's breakpoints and bsm yeah there is nothing special here so there is g3 sm7 sm sm auto sizing in line forms okay there's nothing special here so let's get to the validation okay so we already have validation with ace.mv automatically and okay so the validation here is describing how it will be displayed you see when it is not valid it becomes like this okay actually i would like to test this and to validate it we already have validation in our lectures let's see lecture nine perhaps we have validation there yeah we have validation there uh so let's open the controller of lecture 9 and uh, let's give it a path okay we have lecture 9 yeah it should work directly okay and when i submit something invalid okay so it is being displayed like this as you see right now and uh, for validation, I am going to add some uh, class check here. So we need to set some classes into our lecture 9 CS HTML. Okay. So you see, uh, we are going to have form check class here for where uh, for each div like this okay so let's refresh the page okay and then um, we need to add some for check input class are they automatically typed in So what is the class of this? Okay, there is no class. Uh, so we need to set class ourselves. Mm. Can we set the class here? Uh, using uh, our other yeah, type would be easier, which is at the bottom. So I will use that on check. okay and uh, this is a much better approach as you know and then we have label and let's see the label is yeah there is label for so i'm going to set them as class form label um asp4 so we just need to add class form label 
class form label, class form label, um, class form label here. Okay. So we did set class form label to all labels, and then we need to add okay class invalid feedback. Yeah. So this uh, class invalid feedback will be set to I think here. So yeah, let's try that, how it looks. You see now it is much uh, better formatted. Um, let's add something like this. Okay, I'm not able to enter something like that. Let's try this. Okay, so it is like this. And when I hit, okay, so you see they are being differently visible. And however, this is not uh, made. Okay, I think I need to add form control class to the inputs. Let's format this page. Input class form control class form control. Um, and we have input class form control. Okay, here and here, and we have here. Okay, let's refresh. Okay, it is taking some time. By the way, it may the form control may not be valid for some types such as birthday or email. I'm not sure. Okay, it is taking too much time. Why? Let's just restart from here. So validation is a really good option. The server side, okay, is invalid. Invalid feedback has validation class. Okay, valid feedback and invalid feedback. So you see if you add is invalid, then it will be like this. Okay, lectures nine. Okay, now they are looking uh, like this. Um, let's add something like this. Okay, the entered value was not a valid integer. But the text box is still not red. Uh, the reason is, okay, now it is automatically getting displayed like this. And even. Yeah. Um, if we want to make it like this we need to add is invalid class to our class here and yeah i think i need to search for it to how to make it let's see Okay, so someone has already asked it that. Okay. Hmm. Okay, there are some JavaScript code. 
I wonder if there is easier way. Hmm. Okay, we already have them. Oh, I see. Yeah, it is not that easier. So currently we will continue with that. Okay, but it is still looking cool. We can also uh, add a class to this as column, let's say, six. And when we refresh, it won't take the entire space, it will just take the half of it. Okay, and supported elements, input text area. You see, by default, they can be like this. And when you click it, it returns correct. Let's see how it is done. There is invalid feedback. Let's copy and paste this to test. Yeah, now it is taking half space. So I will copy this to uh, picture 15. Let's return back to main page. Yeah, by default, you see they are red. And when I check it, okay, nice. this is working great. You see they are becoming uh, a check mark. So how do we achieve that? We achieve it with starting as is invalid class, adding that. So, uh, as uh, until uh, something is written, you see it will be invalid automatically, like the yeah, it's pretty cool. So, you can do this for, uh, we can do this for, I think, our uh, lecture nine. So in here, I am going to add a class, not here, but uh, input. Here is invalid and is invalid and is invalid and is invalid. Okay, let's add it to so all uh, form controls. And let's return back to lecture nine. You see, they are all red by default. And as soon as I add something, okay, it is not getting fixed. Not getting fixed here. Okay, they are all remaining as red. Why? So what is the difference between this and this? Oh, it is just having a required tag. Therefore, it is not getting fixed. Okay, so let's also add that as required, required, required and required required and required okay let's refresh now which has values can we fix it no interesting did it refresh Are there any differences? Mm. There is input checkbox for check input required.
form class was validated. I see. Maybe this is the reason. Let's see the difference. Let's add this to lecture 9 as well. So form check and I think I will add was validated. Let's see if it makes any difference. Okay, now I see validation here for the first one. Oh, I see. So was validated needs to be added here. And I think it will now become, yeah. Now they are all validated because we did load something. And when I delete it, it becomes invalidated. And when I add it, it becomes validated. Yeah. However, since we uh, do enter something, it is still being validated screen like this. So I think this is just checking that it has anything or not. You see with required tag. So uh, as long as you add something, it tells that it is validated. And if you delete it, it becomes like this. Yeah. Okay. And what else? There is there is tool tips. So what is oh? You see the tooltip is displaying uh, messages as a tooltip. How do we do that? We do it with valid tooltip, yeah. So let's add a valid tooltip to our validation for. I think I can add it here, class valid tooltip. This is for first name check. Okay, when I delete it. Okay, so it is being displayed like this. Okay, the tooltip is displayed in an incorrect place. And since I added a color here, it is breaking how it should look. Okay, and let's make it. Okay, now it is visible. But the positioning is not correct. Because I think it should be division, not a span. When I refresh. Okay, I don't even see it now. Okay, what's wrong with this? Hmm. So it has position relative, I see. So you see, if you don't set position relative to your uh, form check, then the tooltip won't work. And uh, now it's still not working yet. Interesting. What else there is? There's position relative, needs validation, no validate. Yeah, I think I need to set this. So let's add it. Okay. They're not working. The total is not being visible. Why? Be sure to have a parent with position relative on it for today. Hmm, so there is position relative. Maybe all classes needs position relative. Okay, form check position relative. Yeah, maybe I need to remove this. Yeah. 
you see these require some experimentation therefore anyway i won't spend time with that just add this to the our index html and see if it is working there okay oh we have an error do we have add character yeah here okay and let's refresh okay so when i add it like this why i can see the toolkit yeah it is not visible here as well maybe because of the parent so if i take this into here what happens Mm. let's add this to the very top let's see I think for this to work we need to add some JavaScript it is not displayed here which JavaScript do we have do we need probably this JavaScript so we can add this to end of our page uh, but this may break our other um, automated code yeah now it is working um okay so you see it is selecting or needs validation classes and preventing tip fault and then adding was validated class to it okay but it can break our other code as well so yeah now let's uh, add this to our okay notes okay we have custom styles uh, we have browser defaults okay just pass it to our site supported elements okay there's two tips okay then the components hmm yeah these are really cool okay so how it works it use according to use collapse let's start with this example okay first let's clear everything okay it is becoming slower since there is too much code in this page so so let's add another page another index page to as lecture 16 Let's add an index. Okay, we 
just need to add razor page click it something in what is okay here yeah empty indexes html and let's add a router here so i will remove this and add a controller Okay, like this and okay actually I don't Okay, and okay, I know the reason. So I didn't add as a controller, therefore it's not working. I need to add this, and then I need to, yeah. So the problem is I have selected incorrect thing, so I need to add the correct. Okay, and. why this is not working yeah i think i just need to reload this Oh, it's still not working. Interesting. Oh, I know the reason. It has to be inside an action, not inside the class. Yeah. So I will just return index view. Okay, and lecture 16 index HTML is here. And let's just copy paste. So, so what is this? Uh, this is class according and it has according item, according header, according button. It has, you see, collapse and the target is collapse one. And the UC area controls collapse one according item one h2 and we have a uh, collapse one id and it will collapse it or not let's run the application to see you see the logic is simple it just collapses it or opens it with id here collapse one and area controls collapse one and target uh, is collapse one okay and they are stacked inside uh, div class according with div class according item classes and then there's headers and the item itself okay so you see they are collapsible and it uses probably some jQuery as well. It also has some nice transition. Okay. All right, and then we have example. And then there's flush. So what is the difference between these two? Looks pretty same to me. Okay. 
is not then there is always open you see is important so for always open what do we change we just omit the data so we remove data bs parent attribute in on each accordion collapse where is it database toggle database parent there is no such thing here let's call up show according collapse according according item according header uh, we have according according header we have data ps toggle collapse i think we remove what do we remove we have id class according collapse show okay collapse show means it will be showing so what is removed here is area controls area expanded oh here you see it has database parent according example which is this so when you remove it it becomes always open really simple okay and there's nothing else then there is alerts okay so alerts is just class uh, which gives different colors nothing else we can just uh, do an example of it uh, it is a simple class which has different colorings you see alert alert morning alert primary alert dark so when you remove one of the alert what happens just alert dark it is not anymore alert you see you need to have both classes uh, yeah then there is link color alert link utility it is also looking cool okay let's also see that you see uh, links are looking like this alert light and alert link so when i remove alert link what happens for example i will remo remove alert link in alert light you see now it becomes a regular link like this not anymore um, good example let's move from first one okay yeah like this okay uh, so let's also notice alerts and okay link color and then there's additional content so it is as alert success alert heading and mb for p class hr yeah then there's icons oh you see there's an icon here so it starts with icon icon where is the icon which oh, is yeah it is an embedded svg yeah But this is really stupid to put entire SVG here. I would not use this. I would use static icon. That would be better. Why did they make it like this? I wonder. There is symbol. So symbols are defined here. Then they are used um, here with the class. So there is symbol ID, you see. 
Okay. Let's see the description. Hmm. Okay. So this is a good phone. You see we have alert warning, alert dismissible. And these two are how uh, it will be faded. And roll alert, it has strong and we have a button which has button close. And you see data BS dismiss alert, it will dismiss this one. It means an area label close here. So when refresh it, this uses the JavaScript. Yeah. You see when an alert is dismissed, the element is completely removed from the page structure. If a keyboard user dismisses the alert using close button, their focus will suddenly be lost and depending on the browser reset the start page document. Hmm. So what does this mean is, let me show you. When I add this to the very bottom of the page like this, let's see how it behaves the focus will be lost yeah nothing happens it stays there i think the behavior is good okay bootstrap icons i think we can use bootstrap icons directly like this so you see if i add this to my page i should be able to use these icons automatically there is download there is compile css and cs Oh, not this one. We already have that. Okay, I need to get bootstrap icons. Let's see if it works or not. So it starts with I. Okay, it is not visible. So we have something missing. Paste the SVG right into your project code. Why we can't include all of it? So if I paste this code, it should be visible. Let's try that. Yeah. However, I don't want that. I want to include all icons. How can we do that? Oh, it is pretty big. So there is download. Um, oh, there is CVN, yes okay um, i think this is let's add that cdn into our uh, view start i will add it as oh i can edit my layout as well so where is our layout inside shaded layout you see there's body and my link i will edit as this and now it will be loaded at the beginning so let's open the index here and now without this i should be able to use it so let's restart you see i'm using layout okay this is restarting Okay, almost restarted. Okay, okay, now the item is visible. That file might be huge, but it will get loaded into cage. So when we refresh, we should be able to see that. Where is it? Um from here let's see yeah this one uh, its size is okay ah, not that much okay now i can use every icon i want 
direct name so let's try example here i want to add that svg to my page i will just use the classes so let's add them like this and let's refresh the page okay oh they are missing why because i need to change it to i i think not the svg yeah so let's try it no mm. maybe i need to edit like this i the i class equal to like this let's try okay exc exclamation triangle it is not available i see exclamation triangle here so this is the oh i see the class name is different than what i have written and when we refresh yeah now we can see it so you see now it is it doesn't have any padding uh to have padding i need to have i think this edition it's a break point it's a margin actually and now when i refresh yes now it has margin okay okay um let's note it okay how to load all bootstrap items from cdm and use them directly with proper class name and yeah do we have anything that is diminishing yeah we have seen that let's also edit mm okay then we have batch okay i think i will pause here okay so let's continue with pages and Badges scale to match the size of the immediate parent element by using relative font sizing and M units. As of V5, badges no longer have focus or hover styles for links. Okay, so it takes the size of the immediate parent element, which means the immediate parent element is, for example, H1 is here. You can also have notification badge, something like this. It is pretty cool. So let's try that okay here and when we refresh you see it's a notification with a badge so badges is uh, taking the immediate parent element and which is being the button it is the parent element and you can have something like this as well there is also visually hidden on read messages you see um so it says that okay so what does it do? okay so you see this information is being used for uh, screen readers and assistive technologies you can also have different uh, badge colors like this or pill badges as well okay so let's uh, add them some color to add color we just use 
BG success or anything BG secondary not BG secondary but I will use BG success and BG dot um, light okay when we refresh it you see they are taking the color I have given okay uh, so pages colored pages okay and fill pages okay there's nothing special here and then we have bread come breadcrumb so breadcrumb is a hierarchical uh, navigation is extremely useful and it is commonly used as well so let's read it this is important one breadcrumb indicate the current page's location within a navigational hierarchy that automatically adds separators via css okay example Use an ordered or unordered list with linked list items to create a minimally styled breadcrumb. Use our utilities to add additional styles as desired. Okay, let's um, test this. I also would like to see how it looks in uh, static HTML file as well. Okay, so you see our breadcrumb is working. And when we test it in the static html page it is looking like this completely different than this you see okay and okay there are dividers we can change the divider style okay so like this dividers are automatically added in css through before and content they can be changed by modifying a local CSS custom property BS breadcrumb divider or through the dollar breadcrumb divider SAS variable and dollar breadcrumb divider flipped for its RTL counterpart if needed. Okay, so let's see if this is working as well. Yes. You see it has a style uh, inline style modifier. Actually, I have never use with this i believe this is modifying a css and you are setting a new uh, divider like this let's see if it is working yeah it is working okay and there is what else there is it's also possible to use an embedded svg icon oh nice so for embedded SVG icon, we are typing its full URL like this. Hmm. Okay, you see, this is an SVG icon, where it is? Here. This is also important one to take a note. If you ever need SVG icon inside, you can type it like this however okay it shows some unexpected characters let's see if it is working or not yeah working so in the url it is typing full svg or i see some escape characters Okay, let's let's crawl SVG icons. Let's see if there is a way for that. Mm. So, how do we use this? Can get this icon now. Okay, for example, let's try this. Okay, there's SVG. Okay, free download SVG. 
But I'm not sure how we're gonna make it something like this, a single line. You see it's pretty big. So I'm not sure how we can edit. Okay, separator. Maybe there is a better answer. Hmm. Maybe we can give a full path for it. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. So it can take URL, therefore I can have a static URL here. I will edit the images at existing item. And it's inside downloads, right arrow. So here it is going to be a URL. Therefore, maybe something like this. No. Okay, so. Yeah, let's try this. So, this is a URL. I'm not sure if it will work or not. No. Okay. No, it is not working. Let's see if it is uh, getting the SVG icon. Yeah, so we have a problem with pathing. You see, it is trying to get URL from uh, here. Therefore, we need to provide maybe something like this. Okay, it is still trying to get URL from uh, Bootstrap, so let's try this. Yes, yeah, still trying that. Probably it is related to their JavaScript. So okay, SVG URL. Let's try that way. So we need to convert that SVG into base 64. We can't directly give a URL, I guess. So how can we convert it? Encode SVG to base 64. Yeah, it is like this. So I think it will work now. Um, how was it? Uh, link it. Yeah, here. So we will just give okay something like this data url image svg examine base 64 and here are base 64 
forth like this yeah it is looking pretty layers and when we refresh yeah all right we have changed it Okay, it is base 64 but not visible okay it shows the image here so it is working correctly we can see the preview of SVG like here, as you see. However, it is not visible. Hmm. Watch. Not visible. URL data image SVG. Maybe we need to set some style as well. Okay, data image SVG XMLS with height at hmm. maybe we need to set with an height. So in the downloaded, probably we need to set pixels like this and. So let me check it out. No, still not set. So let's set with an head here. It's equal to eight and eight. Yeah. So let's uh, base and cut this. I'm not sure if it will work or not. Yeah, we have a new base encoding. And here, let's edit. Refresh. Yeah, now working. Okay. You see, I can also change its size to, let's say, 16. So it should still work. I think it will look double size. So this shouldn't make any difference. I can even remove this, I think. Yeah. And let's re upload. You can also copy paste it into SVG convert, I mean a base 64 converter. And when I edit. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we have seen how to make a custom breadcrumb. Okay. How to use a custom SVG image as a breadcrumb separator with a six four method. Okay. Okay, so it is working. Uh, let's move to the next, which is buttons. Okay, buttons are one of the most commonly used elements uh, in web development. And Bootstrap already have some uh, regular buttons like this, but you can of course have uh, better buttons with using uh, custom classes. Uh, so they are basically like this this is a simple and elegant design however of course it is up to you to uh, improve your design okay let's refresh and you see they are like this they have hover effect they have active effect uh, however of course uh, you can also use custom models uh, let me show you one of my favorite button that I use my own website. Uh, this is also pure uh, CSS button. Okay, uh, you see, it is like this. 
so you can have gradient having buttons and other custom things it is up to you uh, but this uh, would also pretty much work there is also uh, disabled buttons for example for disabled i think just we add uh disable it let me see so you can have uh block buttons like this you see when you add md block it becomes block uh, there is also justify content we have already seen that you see there is toggle active toggle disable toggle for disable it we just add uh disable it uh, word to the button for example like this and now it will become disabled you see okay and let's see if there is another way okay that's it there is nothing special okay and then there is button group you see you can also group buttons like this for button group you just add class button group and there is you can have a role as well what happens if we remove role i wonder that okay they are working as expected when we add role yeah nothing changes and since this is a button group it is not as you see it is in line it is not block i think we can have the block like this and now it will be get take the entire row let me refresh you see i can also add some margin uh, like m4 and now it will have some space you see like this and if i want only certain uh, size to have margin not x but margin yeah like this it will have margin like this yeah okay and uh, so okay so it says you need to ensure correct role provide label y ensure correct role and provide a label in order for assistive technologies such as screen readers to convey that a series of buttons is grouped an appropriate role attribute needs to be provided. For button groups, this would be role equals group, while toolbars should have a role equals toolbar. Hmm. In addition, groups and toolbars should be given an explicit label, as most assistive technologies will otherwise not announce them, despite the presence of the correct role attribute. In the examples provided here, we use ARIA label, but alternatives such as ARIA labeled by can also be used. So this is for uh, assistive technologies such as imagine that there is a um, vision uh, problem having person and uses assisted technologies and when the screen reader reads your website if you don't provide role and area label uh, they won't be properly read to the uh, user so this improves your website usability across uh, impaired individuals as well it's pretty extremely useful you should use that you see there is div class button group and a recurrent page okay so yeah you can also use ref as a button group here they are a little bit different okay um you see this margin we have added here uh, has changed the way buttons uh, margin what can we use i think there is also okay we can also have a d like this Interesting, this is interesting. Oh, I see. So when I make this not the block part, 
Yeah, display block is changing the behavior of uh, button group in interesting view. Hmm. So this is position relative in line flex. I see. That is how it is done. Hmm. So when we change in line flex, it, it, it is breaking. However, we can just encapsulate it with another div and now it will be like this okay we can have mixed styles like this and or outline styles like this checkboxes you see they are also toggled so you can toggle them for to have toggle we just add input type checkbox class button check and there is label for that one you see it, it uses btn check one which is the id of this input it's pretty cool like this okay and you can also have radio oh you can even have button toolbar there are you see multiple button groups in button toolbar you can also mix them you can also have sizing you can also have nesting with drop down menu you can also have very uh, vertical this is all about button groups okay button group mixed styles outline styles checkboxes radio button groups okay button toolbar you don't need to memorize it you just need to know what to look for and what options there are as i said so if you know that there can be buttons like this then you can look for it from this page or other uh, pages and achieve what you want okay there is also cards okay cards is huge uh, component Okay. Cards. Bootstraps cards provide a flexible and extensible content container with multiple variants and options. Okay, it's important to understand this. About. A card is a flexible and extensible content container. It includes options for headers and footers, a wide variety of content, contextual background colors, and powerful display options. If you're familiar with Bootstrap 3, cards replace our old panels, wells, and thumbnails. Similar functionality to those components is available as modifier classes for cards. Example. Cards are built with as little markup and styles as possible, but still manage to deliver a ton of control and customization. Built with Flexbox, they offer easy alignment and mix well with other Bootstrap components. They have no margin by default so use spacing utilities as needed so spacing utilities are m this is margin p padding and t is top b is bottom s is left and e is right x is left and right i is top and bottom so it is like this m t is zero this is top s is i think left yeah you can also have negative margin okay let's uh, test uh, this card so for card we use class card we can also have style uh, width like this and you can have an image to display in card so let's put a image to card Okay, let's 
add an image from here for example let's add this one okay okay let's copy the image link okay and paste it here cart image top so this is the top class cart there's cart body cart title cart text and a button so when i refresh you see cart is here it is looking great it's so few lines of code uh, it can be also customized you see there is cart body title text links uh, cart image top cart text and list groups list groups are also inside a, a cart like this so cart is extremely useful for uh, grouping uh, elements you see and if i want a margin i need to add like this so mb5 it will have margin bottom you see like this and you can have featured cart header like this cart footer kitchen sink okay so you see this <coughs> this is a cart and it combines uh, multiple elements for example let's copy and paste our image okay like this cart title an item an item an item a link link and an image you can also have header footer so it is looking great let's copy this as well okay there is cart cart header cart body and let's refresh you see feature it so it is taking full space by default however i think i can add call uh, four call six so it will take only half of the space not the full space i'm pretty sure it supports yeah you see now it is taking half of the space of the, my entire screen so when i even make this small it will still take uh, half of the space but other things will take uh, the ram and when they get smaller they may also get smaller according to yeah why it changes because ram is uh, based on screen size i think so equal to font size root element and it probably changes when you make a screen smaller okay and you can also have quota card like this and another card with text center you see when you are working with bootstrap you just can uh, nest uh, or um, or let's say not nest but append multiple classes so this is a combination of card and text center so it is entire text centered you can also have size so you see for sizing they have used a column like i did you can also use utilities so vw75 i think it will take 75 percent so it should be equal to call eight yeah it's equal to column eight and i think we can also set custom i'm not sure let's see oh no there's no custom yeah and what else there is there is using custom css yeah like this text alignment navigation oh you see even navigation can be made as a card so let's copy paste it and analyze it so there is card text center i can also set this as I'm not sure, but maybe we can. Mm. 
I'm still having memorization problem, not used to that. A moment. Okay, when we add a container class to this, yeah, it should have some default positioning. Yeah, now it is positioned center and yeah, it is working as expected. It also has some default padding as you see. We can also check, analyze it and see the padding since we added a container class. So from the container class, it is getting, let's see, where is it? So margin left, margin right, padding left. Yeah, so the padding is 0 0.75 IRM by default. When I remove them, you see padding is gone. That is how container works. I can also set a custom padding, I think, like this zero so it will it should override yeah it has overridden the uh, padding of container and it has important tuck that is how it overrides it okay uh, as you use it you will uh, get used to it you see there is also image cup oh image overlay let's test this too so for image overlay Let's uh, get um, a wallpaper from here. For example, yeah, this one. And from here, okay, let's see how it looks. Yeah, this is working. It's taking the full space right now um can i make this smaller i'm not sure let's add column four it should be automatically resized yeah yeah it is resized to fit and there is the um text text is not very much visible though so for text maybe we can add some background bg dark let's see how it makes what kind of background yeah now working okay let's continue you can also have horizontal for horizontal uh, what do we made we have row column oh uh, this this just uses um, row and columns. You see there is a row and there is a column and there is another column. That is how you can horizontally set it. It's pretty convenient to use. It's pretty easy, elegant. Okay, when I refresh the page. You see it is here. Okay, there is also card style, so we can set a card style as well. Like this, text dark, BG warning. And you can also have borders. Like border primary, border secondary, border success, border danger. And I can mix them with um, background as well. For example, for border info, let's add... Uh, BG danger okay and let's name uh, header as danger and let's see how it looks okay so here we have header danger and we have different border as you see so when I set border danger as well how it looks yeah it looks like this uh, you can also set another, for example, let's set the border warning. We can also set borders, I think, uh, width, so border free. It should be related to size of the border. Yeah. And what other options we have? We have border bottom. Okay. Spinner border. Yeah, let's try this. I don't know 
kind of effect it has. Wow, it is spinning. Yeah, so this is nothing related to that. Um, what else we have? Tape worded, I don't know. This is probably not related to that. Oh, this has added some cool effect here, I think. So let me show you what did it added. Oh, okay, it wasn't that. So you see, when I have used it, construct of uh, colors, now it is looking, you see this uh, line here, it is looking cool at here. Yeah. Okay, and you can also mix utilities. You can also have card layout. It is done with uh, columns and okay. Oh, it is done with a card group. So you see, there is also card group option feature, or let's say. And let's add this card another background such as BG Rangers. You see, you can mix anything you want with Bootstrap. And now it has like this. It doesn't have border though. So add border warning. Like this. And yeah, now we have borders. So we can also have card title. Oh, it, it, it is already there. Card title. Yeah. Okay. And... There is also card footer if you want and it uses text muted then you can have grid card it uses column and rows approach you can have as you want yeah there is nothing new okay so this is a really important cards are really important feature of uh, bootstrap cards um Content types. Okay, and title text links. Okay, images. These groups. You see, the web design or design of anything is totally up to your imagination. It is about how you imagine and how you uh design it uh so you can have all kind of different uh designs okay using utilities using custom css for custom css you just add style and do whatever you want okay text alignment okay navigation you see, as we progress, it is just a mix. Uh, it is just that we are mixing what we have seen already, uh, nothing else, because the core of the concept, the core concept is uh, same. It is about mixing utilities. It is about combining different classes, and they are all um, compatible with each other. So they are working. So there is Corrosal. And Corrosal is also really cool and important feature of Bootstrap 5. Carousel. A slideshow component for cycling through elements images or slides of text like a carousel. Okay, how it works. How it works. The carousel is a slideshow for cycling through a series of content built with CSS 3D transforms and a bit of JavaScript. It works with a series of images, text, or custom markup. It also includes support for previous slash next controls and indicators. In browsers where the page visibility API is supported, the carousel will avoid sliding when the web page is not visible to the user such as when the browser tab is inactive, the browser window is minimized, etc. The animation effect of this component is dependent on the prefers reduced motion media query. 
see the reduced motion section of our accessibility documentation. Please be aware that nested carousels are not supported and carousels are generally not compliant with accessibility standards. Example. Carousels don't automatically normalize slide dimensions. As such, you may need to use additional utilities or custom styles to appropriately size content. While carousels support previous slash next controls and indicators, they're not explicitly required. Add and customize as you see fit. The dot active class needs to be added to one of the slides otherwise the carousel will not be visible. Also be sure to set a unique ID on the dot carousel for optional controls, especially if you're using multiple carousels on a single page. Control and indicator elements must have a database target attribute or ref for links that matches the ID of the dot carousel element. Slides only. Here's a carousel with slides only. Note the presence of the .d block and .w100 on carousel images to prevent browser default image alignment. Okay, so let's start uh, testing uh, carousels. And I will use some example from here. Okay, so let's test it here. Oh, not this one. I will use the starter monster. Okay, the first image. Okay, and let's move to next. Uh, another image. Okay, by the way, let's change it to English. And another image here. Okay, so on the images, okay, there is a problem. One moment. Okay, on the images, you see there are deep look and with 100% uh, features. So, oh, this carousel has some problems. So this is set as active. Let's see when we remove this class, what happens. Mm, okay, for carousel to be active, so we need to add anything. Oh, this is first slide and other ones are not working. So, for controls, we need to have, let's see, carousel slide, carousel, example slides only. Okay, it is the ID. Database, right, carousel, yeah. We have carousel, new active ID. Oh, I see the controls are here. Uh, so let's copy paste it. So button class carousel control preview button type. Okay, you see the target has to be this. And when we refresh, okay, so the carousel is uh, here, however, it is taking full space. So I'm going to have column uh, three and have a big background as info, for example. So let's refresh it. Yeah, and we can also have text centers. I don't know if it will work, but let's try it yeah now our carousel is much better working you see instead of background i can also have alternatively a border such as border info like this so it won't oh the border is not working you can see it so let's add some margin such as margin 5 however the border is still not visible so for borders let's set a width okay carousel is still not getting borders yeah why mm. Uh, 
Окей. Okay. Let's see if someone has asked that. Let's add this to the our style and see what happens. Okay, and no, still not visible. Mm. Let's check the source code. So this has Corosol inner and we have Corosol like this. Yeah, so the Corosol is taking full space. So I'll probably I need to set a border to Corosol inner, not to Corosol itself. So let's remove this and let's get this border into the Corosol inner like this. Okay, let's refresh. Okay, still not visible. So why? Okay, there is border, but I don't see the borders. Border width, border color, but it is not visible here. Yeah, very weird. Overflow hidden with position. Border box. Okay. So this is not working. Background works, but border is not working. Yeah, you see, since I have removed its uh, overflow hidden, yeah, not working. Okay, bootstrap carousel borders. Um, let's try regular borders. Oh, regular border is working. This is way. Ah, I see. First, I need to add border. Then I need to add the border style like this. Now it will work. Yeah. Okay. You see, it is working as expected um uh, the uh, the button color is still pretty uh invisible so we if we remove aria hidden like let's make this false and yeah no difference so i need to change the color of this i think um how do we can we change okay so there is prev icon prev, prev icon next next icon let's see if we can change icon of these colors okay Yeah, someone already asked probably that. Arrow icon colors. How can we change it? Oh, 
oh you can even set svg so let's try that we have already learned how to set svg actually okay so you see it is using the same way oh it didn't work oh it worked but image is still uh white as you see it's a bigger image though as you can see i think we can provide an image here directly so for url you see now it is telling me to root then images then let's find an color um I, arrow icon i think we already have arrow icon here so it is right arrow svg and then we refresh yeah oh nice this is looking nice as you see it even have fading effect as well <laughs> so what i need is i need to uh, reverse image um background image reverse how can we do that let's see css rotate reverse image auto flip image yeah, how can we do it okay But since this is the background, oh no, nice working. And uh, now this is the same. We don't use scale. Okay, you see now we have custom um, arrows as well for our carousel. Uh, you can even have indicators. So for indicators, what do we have here? Here are the indicators. Let's add it to our carousel. Here, let's refresh. So indicators are you see at the bottom. However, they are not clickable. And with captions, if you want. So for captions, we just add colors on caption uh, like this. So let's add it to the one of them um where do we edit we edit on uh, inside the carousel item uh yeah now the caption is visible okay and cross fade cross fade oh nice so let's add it to the it is just a class addition um to the carousel here like this so when we refresh yeah now fading is working by the way uh, i need to remove i don't know what i need to remove yeah same thing yeah same effect so if you want this you can make it like this i don't know if we can fade it faster fade no probably not can we change the page speed mm. oh there is what is this There is some options. Options can pass the uh, JavaScript. Hmm. So interval methods. I see. So you see, we can change the carousel interval as well. By the way, is our carousel automatically changing? No. For it to change, let's add the JavaScript to the very end, such as script. 
Corazon, so it will affect all Corazon classes. Okay, why it didn't work? Maybe we also need to set auto starts or something. Or also interval, where is it? Oh, I see. So there is an interval here. Hmm. So let's set, but this is, this is for individual interval. So you can also have dark colors cor cor uh, of dark. You see it changes the uh, uh, colors. There's custom. Oh, there is transition duration. How do we set it? You can set it with CSS, I think. Hmm. So let's try it. Okay, so this is the ID. And I will type this inside here. Uh, by the way, this this has to be self uh, executing. So let's set this as a function test. Okay. We have war corrosal and then we need to set corrosal or something. Function test and we can call test here. Hmm. I think I need to start this, yeah. Okay. Now when we refresh, yeah, now auto changing with 2000 interval. Let's make this 1000. Okay, interval seems like not working. So when I remove this, let's see what happens. I think it has some automatic interval, yeah. So we can change the corrosal interval from, let's see, what is the interval? We don't need JavaScript for that. Okay, here. Um, I think, we can set it from here, perhaps. Database interval 1000. So let's test it out. Yeah, you see now one, each one second it is changing. However, it stops changing when I hover my mouse over it. And then it starts automatic changing as well. So if I make this 100 milliseconds, it should be pretty fast. Yeah. Okay, and yeah, this is it. So let's see. What is Corusal? Corusal is hard to pronounce. All these folks. Okay, slides only. Then we have with controls, okay, custom, control, arrow, 
Okay, um, let's custom SVG image. Yeah, um, with indicators and with captions. And cross fade. Okay, individual custom cross white interval. Um, disable touch swiping. You can also disable touch swiping with here data BS touch false. So it will be disabled with touch swiping. That means that you will need to click the arrow. That's it. There is also dark variant with cross of dark. Okay, that's it. You can also have custom transition, um, such as let's change the transition of fading. To do that, I think we need to have class cross of item here, and then. Uh, I'm going to have transition like this and I also need to set for important for it to work I guess so let's refresh and see how the transition changes oh I need to remove fade by the way right so I need to remove this and let's see Yeah, it didn't work perhaps, I'm not sure. Anyway, we can look for options. Okay, so let's move to the next, which is close button. Okay, close button. Close button. A generic close button for dismissing content like modals and alerts. Okay, an example. Example. Provide an option to dismiss or close a component with .btn close. Default styling is limited, but highly customizable. Modify the SAS variables to replace the default background image. Be sure to include text for screen readers, as we've done with ARIA label. Alright, so... Let's see. Okay, there's a button, button close, ARIA label close. Mm. So it is used to uh, close models or alerts. Um, so let's close something. What options do we have? Let's see. I think we have seen this, but let's find an example. Okay, so it has data dismiss. Mm. Let's see, data dismiss. Let's make it like this and I wonder 
if it will work or not. Uh, okay, not working. You see, we can code uh, jQuery, but I am looking for a better example. Okay, so there is data toggle model, data target. Where is the clause? Okay, so how does clause button works? um so only model is looks like this missing where is the model okay there is data toggle model which is where data target my model yeah here here my model and it dismisses uh the parent model probably mm. so let's try a model mm. When I add this button inside this model, and then I will add another button here. Okay, one of them will be inside the model, the other one will be not. Okay, so the model is by default not visible. So to make it visible, uh, I need to have my ID, my model. Okay, right this and then i need another button to open it right here okay open model oh it didn't open right mm. it also needs a model dialog perhaps Maybe it is because there is nothing inside it. Let's inspect it. So we have a model and display none by default, as you see. And it's taking the entire space here. So opening uh, this model is not working, why? Let's copy entire code here. And remove HTML and body. Maybe we need extra JavaScript here. It's not working. Let's see the console if there is any error. No, there is no error. Okay. We already have this. Okay, we will get into the model example, so let's just uh, go there. So there is collapse and there is collapse show. It's like this, so let's try this first. 
So was hier Modus S war. Und das ist so ein Brick. Nee, war es hier ist. Okay, so we have paragraph. You see it has data BS toggle collapse. Hiref is collapse example and by Hiref we are giving ID uh, which is here and it is class is collapse and are expanded false array contrast collapse example link with Hiref and then we have button and button has database toggle collapse target collapse example okay button with BS target Okay, uh, one moment. It opens it. Yeah. Both is working. However, you see when we click. Yeah, that's not. It's not. It's nothing. Okay, working great. Okay. So when we remove here, does it still work? I think it is related to area. Let's see when we remove area controls, what happens. Still working. So, what does area controls do? Maybe it is for screen readers. Hmm. Okay, looks like it is not mandatory and there can be multiple uh, targets oh interesting so for multiple targets there is multi collapse and it uh, targets the class as you see instead of uh, id this is id it is targeting a class and it changes all uh, elements with that class okay it's also be sure that area expanded control and there's accessibility for mystical state of the class element type control screen readers yeah mm, i see okay so let's test that Toggle first element, second element, both elements, yeah. Okay. Collapse, how it works. Examples. Multiple targets. And then we have drop downs, okay. So drop downs is another uh, really important aspect of web development. You see drop down link, drop down button. You can have button or you can have link. For button, um, we just use drop down item and button secondary. I don't see any difference between these two only difference is type button and this one is not a type button but rolled uh, when you see when you do it with ref you can do mouse uh, for example mouse uh, mouse wheeler click like this for button it is not possible but for link it is possible to click with the mouse wheel so that is the difference and then there is also separated buttons with different format split buttons like this you are just adding uh, classes that's it drop down toggle split and drop down toggle that's it and it also has a target uh, database toggle which takes the id of Let's see. No, it is not taking any ID. Mm. 
Let's test this. Okay, so there is bait. I think it is taking from the BTN group. So we just provide uh, class names. We don't provide any ID. And since they are inside in the same group, it just works like this. They can be linked. You see, action is another button here. It can be anything. And then there is a toggle drop down like here. And there are also other links. And this is the drop down item. I think I can give this different uh, styling as well, such as this one. You see. Okay, there is also sizing, dark drop down like this, and you can also have navigation bar with now bar, now bar expand, uh, large, now bar dark, BG dark, you see, and this is the link at the beginning, then you have a drop down here, so this is the first link here, and we have button here uh it opens sub menus like this so let's add this okay our navigation bar is here you see when we uh get smaller size it becomes like this so it is fully uh responsive and it gets it with you see expand large if i make this medium it will expand as long as it is bigger than medium here you see it is totally up to me when to set its uh, responsiveness with break breakers uh, i think it was inside a yeah, breakpoints it's inside layout you can also have direction like this drop right like this drop left menu items active disabled menu alignment responsive alignment mm. right alignment etc you can also have alignments like this Many content so you can have headers like here drop down header slider text like here forms inside inside drop down i think you can even have form so let's change a, a drop down so there's a drop down item Yeah, I will put this inside drop down item here. So let's see what happens. Mm, it won't work probably. Yeah, not working. So for it to work, uh, how do we make it work? This is drop down menu, but how do we make it drop down about? Mm. Okay, so there is drop down menu. But all I see is drop down item. Okay, they didn't uh, pro put a proper example. So 
Let's see. Okay, someone already asked it that. So they have written it inside the class drop down. Let's test it. Okay, we have a button class. Where is the big class drop down? Mm. So we have drop down menu and There is leak class drop down. Hmm. Let's put it here. So this is inside which example? Yeah, here. Another action, something here. Separated link. It is not working. Okay, drop down item danger action. So. Okay, let's figure this out, how to make it work. There is a drop down menu and inside it there is Lee. Okay, so far our examples are not working, so... Form group team class was done. Okay. So when we click this drop down, it is supposed to expand this here. For example, let's try it. Yeah, expand is working. And here I would like to have a menu. I mean a form. So when I put this inside here, where it is so we have a lee here and it is uh, expand here mm. i 
think I'll remove this. So this is a drop down menu and I will remove okay let's test it out. No. Let's remove this as well. Oh, now working. Okay. So I had to remove that drop down menu thing. So inside Lee, I am able to put a form like this. Everything is working and they are separated with, let's see, drop down divider. Then I, I can have other drop down items like this. Yeah. They are fully compatible with uh, Lee class. Okay. This was a good example. So even inside drop down, you can even have a form to submit. That is great. You see how uh, it is easier to work with uh, Bootstrap. When I add this to my uh, generic page, let's see how it looks. Yeah, it is looking like this completely different completely unrelated and completely bad okay so what else there is that we would like to learn drop down options offset you see with offset you can uh, set it to be under here there is an offset here follow my mouse or here there is also auto close behavior some of them can be not auto closable so how do we change it um okay let's find it so there is clickable outside it uses drop down toggle i think yeah so when i add drop down toggle uh no not that so where do we add it Clickable outside it said, but it is not. I don't see how to close inside this example. This is oh I see. So you see you add a database auto close outside. So by default it is auto close yeah working. And when I change it, let's see. So it is here, it has data plus toggle collapse, data target now breakdown here, area control, toggle navigation, and when we add auto close outside, it's still auto closing. So auto close. What else there is options? Oh, there is insight. Maybe I need to set it insight. Let's refresh. Okay, still not working. Oh, when I click insight now, it is not auto closing, so it. Auto close with only outside, and then there is auto close false. Yeah, I need to set it as false. Still auto closing. Maybe I need to add it to. There's no bar. drop down maybe i need to add this to uh, not here but uh, you see there is a drop down link here when i refresh still auto closing yeah Mm. 
Mm. Oh, I see. Because I was changing the test HTML. Uh, I need to change here, not there, of course. So here I will add it to... First, I will try with this. Yeah, now working. You see, when I click outside, inside doesn't matter. I only need to click here. Yeah. Okay, and okay. So this is it. Drop downs and what else we have? Or we examples. Single button. Um, split button like this. Sizing. You can also change the size of the buttons. You see with BTN large or BTN small. Dark drop downs. And putting use of a now now bar. There's also directions and drop out. Okay, drop out. Drop pop. Drop right, drop left, drop, and that is many items active, disabled. Okay, menu alignment, responsive alignment. So for responsive alignment, we add what do we add? I don't see anything here. Ah, here menu drop uh, drop down menu uh, large and so if the screen is large it will be at the end so when the screen is smaller um, it will be at left you see and when I make the screen larger 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 and enough larger Okay, it might have still. So we need to get larger, larger, perhaps. Ah, hmm, yeah, working. Okay, alignment options. Okay, many content headers. And let's see dividers. So for dividers we add you see HR class drop down divider. So not a regular HR but a class of drop down dividers HR. Uh, you can also have text forms. Okay, forms inside drop menus. Okay and drop down options so with options you can set offset and you can also have auto close behavior yeah all right all right so Let's continue with uh, this group.
List group. List groups are a flexible and powerful component for displaying a series of content. Modify and extend them to support just about any content within. Okay. Basic example. The most basic list group is an unordered list with list items and the proper classes. Build upon it with the options that follow or with your own CSS as needed. All right, so let's compare the uh, bootstrap uh, list group with uh, HTML list. So it uses basic HTML UL, unordered list, and LI, list element. So let's compare both of them. Okay, this is the regular list, how it looks, and this is the list group of uh, bootstrap. Okay. And you can set active items uh, with adding uh, active tag like this. So let's test it as well. Okay. Oh, by the way, there is no active here. It is a class of active. Yeah, now you see it is uh, differently colored. You can also have disabled items and it has a disabled class. There's also links and buttons if you want them. So for links, uh, links, uh, you can still use this group and you don't even need to use uh, UL and LI. Uh, you just uh, do a regular div and change class to this group and regular ref uh, a item and you just add this group item and this group item action so it's automatically changing it to this group div and you can even click even uh, you can click them as well you can use buttons to same and there is also flash which to remove some bonus on the corners so if we add this uh, to our this group class, uh, it becomes something like this, yeah. And you can also have numbered. For numbered, we just add this group numbered class. It will be automatically numbered or not. I think numbered works only on uh, actual this group, not on div. So let's test. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, and the number is not uh, pickable, copyable. You can also have. You see, this is a notification with um, badges. Yeah, this is look. This is looking awesome actually. So let's copy and paste it. So it's a ordered list. Uh, you see this group numbered, um, and then we refresh. Yeah, it's looking like this subheading, text, and batch. Of course, if you want it to be uh, taking small size, you can add call tree or width as usual, like this. And you can have horizontal, so for horizontal. Yeah, this group horizontal like this. It is looking like a table. And it also supports contextual items like uh, this group item primary, secondary. So this is just basically adding a colored scheme to it. It can be applied for anything. Pages, custom content. Yeah, this is also looking great. So this is a regular div, but with this group. It has um, just the content between uh, list group item heading with H5 and the small something. Yeah, so this three days ago is put inside. I see. So let's play with this a little bit. Okay, for this uh, three days ago to be visible here i think it uses just y content between when i change it 
yeah it is becoming like this you see so justify content between means left and right align alignment and i will also add some columns like this yeah i can also make this like five and it look like look like this and then there is we have some placeholder sp okay so this is deflex okay and they are even clickable because they are ref you see these are actual links but they are looking awesome as you can see they are entirely clickable okay mm. so you can even have checkboxes and radios as list you see input form check input with a margin like this okay but you see when i click this label it is not checking to have that uh, i need to have a label such as label for and i need to add an item id item 2 for example okay and here if i make it like this the fourth one now it is checkable with uh, you see text as well okay and yeah that's it so let's note this too this group okay basic example a few items Okay, disabled items for disabled we just add disabled uh, class exam buttons flush okay numbered and for horizontal i wouldn't use horizontal it is exactly looking like a table so when uh, when we add something like this it will be much more understandable i just added a single item and you see instead of vertical like this it is horizontal like this nothing else and contextual classes so these contextual classes exist with many of the bootstrap classes okay conveying with additive assistive technologies with badges and custom content yeah check boxes and radios okay yeah and then there is models and models are also really cool and normally hard to achieve a feature component you can say okay modal use bootstrap's javascript modal plugin to add dialogues to your site for light boxes user notifications or completely custom content so this requires javascript and we already have that uh, in our uh, layout page how it works before getting started with bootstraps modal component be sure to read the following as our menu options have recently changed modals are built with html css and javascript they're positioned over everything else in the document and remove scroll from the body so that modal content scrolls instead clicking on the modal backdrop will automatically close the modal Bootstrap only supports one modal window at a time. Nested modals aren't supported as we believe them to be poor user experiences. Uh, so that is how models are closed with a closed button because there is only single model at a time in a page, therefore it will close that one. Experiences. 
Modal's use position, fixed, which can sometimes be a bit particular about its rendering. Whenever possible, place your modal HTML in a top-level position to avoid potential interference from other elements. You'll likely run into issues when nesting a dot modal within another fixed element. Once again, due to position, fixed, there are some caveats with using modals on mobile devices. See our browser support docs for details. Due to how HTML5 defines its semantics, the autofocus HTML attribute has no effect in bootstrap modals. To achieve the same effect, use some custom JavaScript. Okay. Okay, example. So let's start with an example. Okay, so it starts with a model top index minus one. Why do we need top index? I'm not sure. And inside it, we have model dialog and we have model content. And inside model content, you can have model header, uh, which has a uh, button which closes the model. Since there is only single model at a time, it closes that one. You can have model body and model footer. And inside that model, you can have anything. You can have forms. Uh, other things okay why i don't see it ah i don't see it because that model is not visible right now so i need to have a button to open it so to open that model i need to have a button actually i have a button for opening model which is here okay it didn't open okay i need a trigger button here yeah so here and yeah i need an id to trigger it so id will be this and now it will work okay now it is working and i can close i can click save i can close there is some fading. Okay, model fades. So, oh, fading. You see, with fading, it has a background fading. So, I just need to add that my model here. And when I refresh my page, you see the background is faded okay static backdrop what is that oh it means that you can click uh, uh, other places than the model and it will have um click effect so you see in this one when i click somewhere else it is automatically closing however if i want to prevent that i add as um data bs backdrop uh, as static and now it won't get closed when i click somewhere else you see it will clo get closed with the only close button scrolling long content so you can have a low content model as well and you can also have a, a scroll bar bar having a scrollable uh, model so since our content is not that big, it wouldn't have a, pro uh, a, a effect probably. Yeah. So to be able to see that, I think I will just add a, some style. Hit 1000 pixel. So it will take 1000 pixel space. And let's test that way. Mm, it's still not scrollable mm, so this didn't work so let's just expand it with some copy paste okay and then copy paste Okay, still not scrollable. Why? Right. 
Oh, I need to set it to model dialog. Scrollable uh, is making entire page scrollable like this. Um, if I make it like this, it will just be model dialog, not scrollable. Okay. Oh, these also not working. Oh, it's a model dialog scrollable and this is weird. Let's check the source code. So it is going to start example model scrollable, which is where. Here it has Model dialog scrollable here. Model dialog, model dialog scrollable. Ah, I see. Hmm. I need to add it like this. Probably. I'm not sure. Let's test it out. Still not working yet. Model dialog, model dialog scrollable, model text. Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know. You see, you need to make this dialog window scrollable, not uh, the other thing. So, yeah, now it is working. Okay. Okay, and what else? There is static drop model dialog scrollable. And varying model content. What is this? So it says that in the all. Um, what is the difference between these? So they are buttons. You see, this uh, database, whatever, uh, with database, whatever, you are able to change. <laughs> Let's copy and paste this to see. So with uh, different buttons, we are able to change the open it message. There is message text, form control. Okay, let's make this double. But... So whatever. Where is this being written? Recipient, recipient name. Okay, target, whatever. You see, there is some ID, maybe this is... No. Oh, it is not working this here. So there is something extra. I see there is a JavaScript which adds a model listener. Uh, from this uh, listener, it is getting the whatever attribute. So when I add this to end of my page, it should just work. So it will get this. And then it will add an event listener. So it will be leave for entire page and yeah now working so it is adding a listener as show bs model hmm. so this is an event that is being triggered by i think bootstrap Okay, I think this would work with click as well, but I need to get them in that case the buttons. So let's try that actually. 
so these are bottom and for this bottom i will add another class for example gg1 okay there's no such class of course in bootstrap but i am going to add all buttons with gg1 class so simply by the way it requires get element single element i see so it wouldn't work yeah maybe this can work so let's try that at event listener click i wonder if it will work or not no not working yeah so gg1 at event listener says any yeah it should work why okay is it query click yeah it is probably not working because probably this click event is overridden by bootstrap actually we are not typing the full uh yeah I, let's put a full class here maybe that will fix it yeah this is the full class i'm not sure let's try it huh. what what about if we give an id for this id test gg1 so this is MDO model. Yeah, it's definitely overridden. Therefore not working. Probably this event, this click event is already overridden by bootstrap. Therefore it is not working. I can have another button with same name but this time I won't have database toggle uh, it will be like this so let's see I think this will work oh and this is not opening the model of course so we can't even see it hmm. anyway let's reverse back so that it will work okay yeah uh toggle between models open first model open second model um, is working so in the second model click we just open the another model here yeah. then we can have change animation uh fade transform show transform model dialog hmm. it's not necessary there is also dynamic heights okay large model like this large model there's also full screen model yeah like this you see uh, full screen with x x large hmm. so you can also set full screen when to be triggered for example not yet not yet yes if your screen is below certain size you can trigger full screen model and how it behaves when we make it okay so it is it is by default with the size of bootstrap yeah and okay it looks cool responsive full screen models are generated like this yeah backdrop okay these are not very important there's toggle events okay okay yeah. what are models 
how they work. Let's see what is the model. Yeah. How it works. Uh, examples and model components. Examples, model components. Okay, we don't need static backdrop. This is important to know. You see, you just need to know how can you set. You can set a model that when you click somewhere else, it won't get disappeared. And you can also have. You can also enable. Um, Uh, scroll bar these are important things to know um, there is also tooltips and pop out wow you see these have tooltips and pop hours for that we just add a tooltip test and a tooltip and for pop over we just add pop over test so here this trigger pop over title this is it is also a model ah, we just missed this probably but well, there is also grid and other things here yeah, we, we haven't done this yet so let's copy and paste this too and let's make example of this so for this to work um i need uh Oh, this is just a model body so just replace our model body actually we can append it to our model body yeah so let's append it to our model body here like this and when i refresh i will see now this is available but it is not working interesting why Tooltip test and pop over test. Hmm. For this, we need popper mean. Yeah, you must include popper mean or use Bootstrap bundle. I think we are already using Bootstrap bundle. So why is this not working? Pop our test. Pop our test is so the school tooltip test. Okay, it says pop over body content is set this attribute. working here but not here so do we have an error or something in console no also tooltip is also not working mm. why this test Interesting. Um, set tool to class. Mm. Yeah, this is weird. Well, let's check our favorite okay, layout. And we have bootstrap mean, we have bootstrap icons. And we have bootstrap bundle mean. Yeah, we have all of them. So why is this not working? Using the grid. This is the regular grid. Nothing new there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, it says that tooltips are optimal for performance reasons, so you must initialize them. 
so they are not initialized to be able to initialize them i need to have um, this uh, javascript code at the end of my page for example here so it will get all tooltip and then trigger them yeah like here And when I refresh, oh, still not working. Maybe I need Yeah, why? Maybe I need to check source code of this page. B what JavaScript methods are added? Mm -hmm. Database toggle tooltip. So, what is our database toggle? we have database no we don't have database toggle we have class so let's add data yes toggle equal to tooltip no not this program probably oh i need to add it here yeah. it is mandatory add then um, open it yeah it's still not working let's add this to not inside the model but here and let's see what happens yeah it is not working why why it is not working Okay, there is an easier code, self-executing code like this, self-executing function actually. So let's test it out. No. So it gets rel tool tip. let's try this so this will get executed when the document is ready okay. still not working we have included also bundle um, so therefore it should have tooltip as well let's see what this page uses as a javascript bundle here actually it is the same bundle we have i think 
right here. Let's uh, reload it. Long switch distribute JS bootstrap bundle in JS. Yeah. Do they have any other JS? Document search and document mean. Probably this is same as the other one. Then why it is not working? Let's check our page source and let's see we have script bundle mean here but our tool tips are not working So it is requiring data toggle tool. Maybe I need to add BS data toggle, not just data toggle here. Okay, refreshing. It did become slow somehow. Okay, refresh it. Yeah, now working. And yeah. So this is the correct way. You need to add database toggle tooltip to your objects and it will start working. So um you see it they use this and on our model where is our tool tip okay here database toggle tool tip so this one works and for other tool tip which is here i also need to add database toggle tool tip and now it will work you see this is still not working so for popover do we need anything else let's check it out too um so for popovers do we need some yeah we need an initializer for popover Let's add this inside self executing function. Why the code is not working, I don't know, but it is not working. So let's try this. Yeah. So. To enable popover, let's see what they suggest. so it is something like this why they they have some um by the way this is like this or there is bs i don't know i think there's bs yeah so it's like this probably no so where is the pop over Oh, it is database content pop over. Mm. Yeah, I need to add 
add this to that otherwise it won't work so for initialization database toggle pop over okay now it should work so let's refresh yeah now working okay so how to enable initialize bootstrap uh, tool and pop overs properly yeah this is also important let's see the correct wording of initialize Okay, this is the correct one. Yeah. Okay, and using the grid. The grid is regular grid. There is nothing different. But in model content. Yeah, we already have that. Okay. Um, double between models. Yeah, this is nothing fancy here okay okay let's continue with uh, nows and tabs so navs and tabs documentation and examples for how to use bootstraps included navigation components so this is related to navigation base nav Navigation available in Bootstrap share general markup and styles, from the base.nav class to the active and disabled states. Swap modifier classes to switch between each style. The base.nav component is built with Flexbox and provide a strong foundation for building all types of navigation components. It includes some style overrides for working with lists, some link padding for larger hit areas, and basic disabled styling. Okay, uh, there is an important thing. The base.nav component does not include any dot active state. The following examples include the class, mainly to demonstrate that this particular class does not trigger any special styling. To convey the active state to assistive technologies, use the aria current attribute using the page value for current page or true for the current item in a set. Okay, so there is an easy uh, example. Let's start with that. Okay, here and let's refresh. Okay, you see our uh, navigation is here. Since it is not big, uh, it doesn't change uh, any styling when we make the page a lower screen resolution. Oh yeah it is just getting to the next line so it is not supporting uh, mobile friendliness right now because it's a simple one let's continue to see so here it has a ul class navigation and li class now item each item and inside each item we have a link uh, like this active link and other links are regular but i don't see any difference between active and other links um so you can also have a nav and now class like this it is looking exactly the same and let's continue with available styles there's just for content center there is vert vertical and then there is tabs like this so with tabs we just add nav tabs like this so they become a tab and it is better than uh using the simple case okay like this and then you can also have no pills like this you can have fill and justify here and you can safely omit nav item as long as now link. you can also use now link instead of now item here okay there is flex utilities using drop downs yeah so here a little better uh, navigation 
which has now tabs and a drop down here so let's test that okay it is ul uh, unordered list nav tab uh, one one item is now item drop down you see it is merging now item and drop down okay and let's refresh okay, here and yeah. okay let's continue fills with drop downs okay so to make this um, mobile friendly which was available here as you see uh, let's check our now bar and it uses now now bar expand and d okay and it has a container fluid i think it is related to container fluid okay what happens if we add it here hmm. yeah it is not the way we want so instead of making this container fluid there's x now bar expand here yeah. okay so now bar expand may fix our problem no why did they, they didn't add example here i don't know javascript behavior so there is a now bar with id in my tab and row presentation so there is a uh, tab content so here we can display different things like here okay so there is another example using data attributes made effect method constructor hmm. i think uh, they will explain it in inside now but instead of now so now is related to navigation and tabs you can use it for other purposes as well okay there is now and available styles let's go okay that's not very important tabs like here fields fields and justify uh, tabs with drop downs and you can have javascript behavior roll top list roll top roll top panel so it has id you see it has a home tab id profile tab id and contact tab id then uh, i think this one requires some javascript because i don't see any oh here id home id profile id contact and let's try this if it works or not without javascript initialization okay yeah it is working yeah so we can add some text here let's say uh, home home profile then contact so basically we just type 
IDS profile and it emits it removes the tab here you see there is a tab addition and with data BS toggle tab and target home so with tab content here um, okay area labeled home tag hmm, I think it is taking this from here not from these IDs so we can basically remove this probably remove the IDs here so with area labeled by I think no I am not sure let's try that home profile contact mm, it didn't work so let's try this way okay working so it uses the ID home and the ID here is home tab Hmm. There is area controls home. Maybe this is the way it is. So when we remove this area controls, I think it will. Yeah, this is it. Let's see what happens. Oh no, still working. That is not the case. There is target. Maybe the target is the key. You see target target is ID. Yeah. So target is the key. So from this target, uh, database target, uh, it is taking which uh, tab will be activated. So these are tab panes, fade, show active, and others are the default. When we click this button, you see it has data BS toggle top and data BS target home. So from that, it is just having a uh, now uh, tagging. So when I refresh, it will start working again. You see, yeah, yeah. Tab associated content. It is associated with uh, database target here, and it works with pills as well. Okay, multiple pills using data attributes are there anything special here let's test this probably no okay yeah. and fade effect okay so you see there is fade that is how it gets its effect. We do we have that now item. Where do we edit? We add it to the top content, which is here. Okay, let's add a fade. And Okay, so when fade, oh, I don't see any difference here. Looks same. You see, selected element has a rather different coloring as well. And there's some JavaScript for short. Okay, I think it's not very important. Let's move to the now bar. Nav bar. Documentation and examples for Bootstrap's powerful, responsive navigation header, the navbar. Includes support for branding, navigation, and more, including support for our Collapse plugin. So navbar is the one that we are looking for, uh, which will change bar to be um, menu like this. You see, it is like this when you are, when you are in mobile uh, dimension, resolution, and it becomes full bar. So how it works? How it works? Here's what you need to know before getting started with the navbar. Navbars require a wrapping .navbar with .navbar expand, SM, MD, LG, XL, XXL for responsive collapsing and color scheme classes. 
nav bars and their contents are fluid by default. Change the container to limit their horizontal width in different ways. Use our spacing and flex utility classes for controlling spacing and alignment within navbars. Navbars are responsive by default, but you can easily modify them to change that. Responsive behavior depends on our collapsed JavaScript plugin. Ensure accessibility by using ANAV element or, if using a more generic element such as ADIV, add a role equals navigation to every navbar to explicitly identify it as a landmark region for users of assistive technologies. Okay, and support content navbar brand for your company product or project name. Navbar now for full height and lightweight navigation. Navbar now. Navbar toggler for use with our corpse plugin. Navbar text. Okay, let's start with examples. So, okay, here it starts with a nav and class nav and navbar expand LG. So it will be expanded when our screen is large. It will have a light bar styling and background will be light. So when I refresh, I will see all of this. Yeah, you see, it is light. Uh, it is taking full space right now. If I wanted to take uh, rather, uh, if I wanted to have some paddings, yeah, when I make it container, it will be like this. I could also achieve this with um, margin. Okay, margin which which resolution mb5 perhaps okay margin bottom so this is not mx5 yeah mx is making margin bit uh, like this so if i remove x it will be full margin yeah and I could also add margin top probably, but there is no element in the top, so maybe that is why it's not getting margin from the top of the page. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you see it has a container fluid. Uh, so with container fluid, it is able to change its behavior. Um, then it starts with a class now where brand and it is now bar so this is the brand oh oh i see it is our margin top is also working uh, so let's change our brand to taurus uh, lecture for example like this so you can also put an image here uh, let's put an image from my website for example okay um from media let me turn this into english okay uh from media here let's see some game banners and for example let's add this as a brand so instead of our a class brand it is left like this uh, I think we can have an image as a brand, though I'm not sure. Class equal to now brand. Okay, src equal to this. And let's remove this. Let's see if it will work or not. It won't be clickable, but yeah, oh, it is working. So you see, this now brand class is handling everything for us. It is not clickable. I could make it clickable uh, with, uh, for example, instead of this, I can add it like this and let's see how it looks. Yeah, now I can click it. If I remove the now uh, class here, what happens? Yeah, working nice. Uh, so a brand image with a clickable link you can make the link every, anything you want instead of this i can make it to 
surf url yeah like this you see now it is doing a full page refresh and there is home link drop down let's continue to analyze the code so there is button class now bar toggler but type button database toggle collapse database target now bar supported content area controls now there's the content area extent false area label toggle navigation and there is a spawn now bar toggler item so why do we need this um i think this will be used for uh, this menu let's check it out yeah so now bar toggler is the thing that is becoming visible when our screen size is lower than large here and that is it so this is used for uh, this button is used for um, it is i think called as hamburger menu uh, so this is used for mobile uh, friendliness then there is we have collapse now our collapse id now our supported content it is the rest of the uh, now bar. so this is the thing that is collapsible when uh, screen resolution gets uh, smaller like this uh, okay and then there is uh, an ordered list inside it and then there is a form so form is uh, this search box and unordered list is here so inside unordered list we have now bar navigation and it has auto margin and break two and break large zero i think uh, this is margin break two and this is margin for large screen zero okay you can look for what they mean this is perhaps right and left i'm not sure and there is navigation items and there is a navigation item but it is a drop down like this so just for just by looking these examples you can um, make your navigation as you want okay and then there is deflex uh, so this form is uh, set as deflex display flex and it has a form control input here uh, with margin 2 when i increase this margin 5 let's see how it changes you see now it is 5 margin it to the uh, search button uh, the placeholder is search area label so area label is used for uh, uh, assistive technologies like screen readers and then there is a button uh, okay so of course you need to set form post break currently it will post break to the okay this page uh, with just this and this input doesn't have any name or id so you can't even read it at the code behind anyway uh, that is not the topic right now so this is a uh, now bar fully responsive and fully customizable i can even make this now bar as a dark so instead of light i will make it dark and bg will be dark as well so when i refresh you see now the color coloring changes and background changes button change it as well actually the button is same but it is looking different due to background color change there is a brown brown is working you can even change now brown with a image which we already did that you can even put a, a svg okay so this is what we did exactly actually and image and text is also supported wow cool like this so let's add um text as well to our brand um such as i think where do we put it yeah we put it inside a tag like this this is the game that i developed 
Yeah, not working. And we have seen now there's nothing special here. Okay, I don't see anything different forms. Now bar inside now bar you can put anything you want. Input group such as this. We have seen that. Uh, text now bar text color schemes there is color schemes dark primary and light there are three main color schemes i don't know if there is another as well let's check it out so it should automatically show me there is now bar dark light text brand mm. So I think it is dark, light, and pro huh, I see. So this is still dark, but with primary background. So what does dark or light makes it? It changes the color of the text, I think. Yeah. Okay. And then we use containers although it is not required you can wrap an hour inside the container to center it on a page though net internet container is still required so inner container is always required this one and you can also uh, wrap it with a container uh, instead of wrapping with a container we just added a margin but you can do that as well so there's placements Okay, fix it top. Oh, I see. You can also fix it top. So this is an important thing. Let me show you what does this do. Currently, when I navigate to the, you see, when I scroll down, the bar is not visible. But if I add a fix it top class to the bar, let's see what happens. And now it is always visible like this. You see. And fix it bottom, stick it up. Let's see what does stick it up to do. Okay, so it is oh nice. Stick it up is better. So when you're at the top, it is like this, and as you go down, it is like this. Yeah, I I would prefer stick it up and scrolling. So what is this scrolling? So scrolling does what? I don't see anything related to scrolling. Hmm. So let's try scrolling. Where is the scroll? It says that I will scroll, but I don't see it. Okay, so let's expand this uh, drop down. Okay, refresh. And it is taking entire uh, screen size. And when I refresh, yeah, there is no scrolling, so I can't even see the bottom of the drop down right now so when i add now we're scrolling let's see what happens okay now uh, now we're scroll is this the correct plus yeah and let's see if it changes behavior oh oh yeah yeah so you see now the now is scrollable um however i need to also set some size uh so the style is like this yeah i need to add a style override uh here yeah so when i make it like this okay not 100 like let's make it 200 pixel oh it is still like that Mm. 
this is not the things that we need. Now bar hit. I think I need to change this. Maybe I need to not adhere, but you see this now bar scroll. Maybe I need to add it to the this drop down. It's a now item though. So probably I need to make this scrollable. Let's see drop down. Scroll now. Let's see what happens. Mm. Boost up, make drop down uh, items scroll. Okay, there is already a question related to this. So when we open it, use mark say on separate paint. Hmm. So there is not a regular class. We just need to make our own class. There weren't a, a built-in class, so I'm making it like this: three hundred pixel. And here we are adding our custom class. And when we refresh, now it is scrollable. Yeah. I would expect to have a built in class, but I don't see it. And when we make it like this, what happens? So, oh, nice. It is still scrollable. Nice, very good. All right, so what else? There is responsive behaviors, now our toggler collapse, now our expand toggler. Yeah, we already tested that. External content. Okay, so what does this do? Hmm. So this is a div class collapsible. By default, it is being collapsed. And uh, database toggle. So we add a button which targets this. And the target is the external content here. Database target, database toggle. I see. So you can also use something like this if you ever needed to um here when we refresh you see it will just open it so let's assume that this is your menu and when people click it they will see this okay and yeah that's it all right so there are still so many things okay looks like we may need to have lectures 17 as well because it is over four hours already so we have finished it now but i think i will end the lecture here yeah bootstrap is taking too much time because it is huge Actually, this lecture should be separated into two um, semester, not a single semester, though. But you get the idea. You already have the idea of how to use uh, Bootstrap, how it, what is its logic. Um, so you can also look uh, and find what you need for, and you can fix your problems and. You can solve your uh, problems as well. 
so this we already we have already covered the uh, most of the bootstrap already and there's color schemes i think i will still continue this uh, lecture placement okay stick it up stick it up is really important let's type this as well do you know why i type this content because it may help users to uh, people to find from google's uh, youtube search or google search and it also gives an idea of what is what were what is inside the video um scroll level okay drop down menu okay togglers togglers are really important part of bootstrap okay external content here all right then there is off canvas off canvas build hidden sidebars into your project for navigation shopping carts and more with a few classes and our javascript plugin okay so what is this how it works off canvas is a sidebar component that can be toggled via javascript to appear from the left right or bottom edge of the viewport buttons or anchors are used as triggers that are attached to specific elements you toggle and data attributes are used to invoke our javascript so data is used for invoking and there is attaching off canvas shares some of the same javascript code as modals conceptually they are quite similar but they are separate plugins Similarly, some source says variables for if canvas's styles and dimensions are inherited from the modal's variables. When shown, off canvas includes a default backdrop that can be clicked to hide the off canvas. Similar to modal's, only one off canvas can be shown at a time. So it supports only one off, off canvas. Okay, there are some, some examples, so let's start with an example. Okay, so it has it is a div with class off canvas and off canvas start. Uh, its top index is minus one. Top index minus one. I think it it, it makes it uh, invisible. Okay, someone already asked it that in uh, Stack Overflow. Okay, what is the top index attribute in Bootstrap 3 for its documentation? Does say anything for and as such? Okay, top index minus one value removes the element from default navigation flow. Yeah, user cannot tap to it, but it allows it to receive programmatic focus. Meaning, focus can be set it from a link or scripting. Hmm. So it removes it from the default navigation flow. Basically, it is becoming invisible. When we refresh, I think it won't be here. Yeah, you see, I cannot see it anywhere. It is not available in the flow of the html you see it is here but its computed position is where it is yeah anywhere to be found nowhere you see that it is not in the page When I click focus, I can't even see it. When I focus, okay, scroll into view means it is going there. 
when I click and scroll into view, it is not available. So top index minus, it removes it from the DOM. So I need uh, a trigger uh, to make it visible. So here a full example. Okay, so let's remove this. Okay, let's analyze it. So we have two buttons. You see database toggle is off canvas. Ref is ref is target by the way. You can I think we can even use target. Yeah, target is used for button and ref is used for uh, a tag. Uh, role is button, area control off canvas, link with a ref and button with a database target. They both have database toggle and database target so here are off canvas and id is off canvas example you see target is off canvas example uh, when you use a target or here you need to add its 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 id you can also target multiple uh, uh, elements with a class selector but off canvas can be only have one at a time active okay so uh, let's save and refresh to test Okay, now it's open from the left And when we click somewhere else it is getting auto closed so we can also I think change auto close behavior as well Yeah, model static I wonder if this will work for off canvas. No, it didn't work. Off canvas, and what options do we have? Okay, it is working. When we remove um, database toggle, I wonder if it will work. Probably not. So it won't trigger the. Okay, yeah, it is not working. Okay, let's continue to example placement. So start place of commerce on the left and right, top, top. Okay, let's try with top. Uh, which is here, not a start, but top. When I click, yeah, it is getting opened. And what else that is? Backdrop. Scrolling body element is disabled. When I convert, backdrop are visible. Backdrop with scrolling. Okay, I see. So you see, um, when we enable backdrop, which is here, off canvas with backdrop, I cannot scroll the page. You see, there is no scrolling. And when we enable both scrolling and backdrop, I can scroll. And when I enable body scrolling, I can scroll. So let's see the difference. This is off convert start, off convert start, start. And where the behavior is added. Mm, off scrolling label, canvas title. You see here, database backdrop. So this is uh, what changes the behavior. There is also, let's see. There is ID of comma start. Okay, when we don't add anything as database backdrop, it is by default true probably and in this case database dismiss of canvas 
I see. So I if I change this, uh, where is it? Edit. It is added to the. No. Um. Vs dismiss equal to number of commas. Let's see if they have shown it. Okay, um, bootstrap of canvas dismiss. I will explain you what I am looking for in a minute. So I want that it won't disappear when click it somewhere else. No. external this miss yeah maybe this is this means we already had example for that for model i guess Database dismiss, dismiss, external, internal, backdrop. Maybe it is database dismiss, database. Dismiss. Yeah, it was probably this database backdrop. So let's add it to our off canvas and see if it is working. Hmm. Okay. Off canvas back row. Let's see. Okay, so there is backdrop boolean. Ah, I see. So this is false or true, not static. Hmm. So when I say it false. Let's refresh. And when I click somewhere else, you see it is not getting closed. I need to click this close button. Okay. Uh, yeah. We have uh, did everything we did. Off canvas and how it works. Examples. Okay canvas components okay leave them off of canvas placement right left top bottom and backdrop and database vector of here yeah. 
okay and yeah so then there is pagination okay pagination documentation and examples for showing pagination to indicate a series of related content exists across multiple pages okay this is a reg uh, this is just a um regular pagination. overview we use a large block of connected links for our pagination making links hard to miss and easily scalable all while providing large hit areas Pagination is built with list HTML elements so screen readers can announce the number of available links. Use a wrapping NAV element to identify it as a navigation section to screen readers and other assistive technologies. In addition, as pages likely have more than one such navigation section, it's advisable to provide a descriptive ARIA label for the NAV to reflect its purpose. For example, if the pagination component is used to navigate between a set of search results, an appropriate label could be aria label equals search results pages. Yeah, like this. So these are regular links. Uh, so it is up to you how to uh, done your pagination. It will, of course, um, send data back to server and receive data. I think it should also have some active class or something. Yeah. Let's test it out. Yeah. Active is showing which page is now active. Uh, working with icons. You can also add icons. So for icons, it just uses. this uh, this html icon maybe we can even add uh, image as well as video or something disabled active state okay sizing alignment okay what about uh, too many pages for pagination then we would need to have, I think, a, a drop down menu inside pagination. So, how can we have that? I think we can copy and paste this drop down menu here. And instead of three, let's test it out how it looks. Um, we can add one, two, three. Actually, since it is page three, so let's add three, four, five, and let's refresh. Okay, so bootstrap, uh, pagination, drop down, pages, yeah. Okay, mm. how do we make it? So there's pagination, yeah, and no, no, okay. Okay, so there is a jump page. Oh, it's not working. Okay, so what we need is a jump page. How do we have it? Bootstrap jump page okay there's a question here mm. okay so extension page jump to there's an example let's see the example Okay, I don't see the example. Oh, it is getting loaded. And yeah, so how do we select? It is still not like 
Hmm. Yeah, this is still not like what we want. We can also see the source code here. You see. Hmm. So there is a data URL here. Uh, data pagination true, data search true, data jumps true. Wow. And it initializes it with a bootstrap table. This is an extension of page jump to bootstrap table. Yeah. You can even use this. But actually, I'm looking for a drop down jumping. Not this one. Mm. Mm. Let's try this source code inside our application. Okay. Okay, it should work because we are adding our scripts yeah, it is loaded and here i'm going to change data show jump to search pagination there was an example somewhere else mm. Show jump to show jump to buy pages. Maybe this one. Data show jump to buy pages. Am I typing it correct? Equal true. Let's see. Yeah. So if you wonder what is this data, let's look for it. Yeah, this is an um, JSON data. You see, it shows the number of items not filtered and rows, ID, name, price. Yeah. So this plugin is using uh, JSON data. Okay. But what I'm looking for is pagination with a drop down. Bootstrap landing page themes. Okay, this is not what we're looking for. Okay, there is a jump to Oh, I see. So it has a, it uses a select option. That's actually what we use it. We added an unordered of this drop down menu. Maybe I also need to add a page item to this. Not sure. Okay, it is not still visible. Pagination page item drop down menu. Okay, when we search like this, let's see what happens. Okay, there's page. No. No. Mm. 
Let's hope to them all. Six is the one we are looking for. Okay. I would ask this on Stack Overflow if anybody know it or not, but currently we are at a video, so I can't do it. So inside page item, our drop down menu is not visible. What about if I make this page item as a drop down menu and add more? list item inside it mm, no. maybe instead of this let's make this li as drop down item This we have to inside drop down menu, but not working. When we inspect the code, what do we see? Okay, we see page item. And the page item here, but it is not visible. Okay, drop down menu page nation bootstrap. Okay, something like, oh, this is not the case. Let's see. Okay, someone asked it that, but I don't see it here. This is the regular drop down menu, but it is not working inside the page. Item. So, what do we need is. Maybe we can append it as a new item here. Instead of here, let's append it to unordered list like this. And let's see what happens. Okay, still not visible here. Let's make this, let's wrap it in it. Deep class page item. Yeah, not visible. Hmm. Okay, let's try this div class containers 
Okay. View cross page item. And let's see what, how it looks. Why it is not visible anywhere? I don't understand. Oh, our drop down menu is wrong, probably. Yeah, so probably these need to be inside a div ID drop down. Maybe that is why we were not able to see it. Okay, let's make it like this and see what happens. Let's add this to the top. Mm. Our drop down menu is not visible. I think I know the reason, yeah. Because we need to have a toggle item. Or a button, perhaps. Hmm. Hmm, I see. Okay, drop down toggle, type button, and ID drop down menu button. Ooh. So, I don't think this ID is really important. Let's see. Okay, now it is visible. Yeah. So this button is necessary uh, to display page. And I will make this as a button. Let's say, let's remove it. It will be default. Yeah, like this. And yeah. Probably we don't even need this ID. So let's put this inside our page item. Here I will cover it with as a li like this. You see, as you do copy and pasting, uh, you won't learn it immediately. You need to make examples. And now it is working, yeah. Now I can have a pagination like this. Select page, jump page, whatever I want. For example, let's make this as btn. Um, dark and jump yeah yeah now it's working I can also add 
some class to this instead of drop down item i can i think i can make them as page item let's see no maybe here formatting didn't much change let me remove this how it looks yeah okay maybe we can mix them like this okay uh, we have achieved what we wanted instead of jump you can also have a drop down like that you can also have a jump button it is totally up to you okay pagination overview working with icons so basically you can i think we can put anything as an icon here uh, let's put our svg which is um here yeah mm. okay so this is our previous so i just need to put a spawn inside here uh, to change its icon i think so how was it yeah here okay a class page link ref is this and inside is because of here i will just tell class equal to um cursor control pen is this our yeah here this one and let's see how it looks okay our previous icon is working as you see i can also change its size with some styling such as style weight equal to 25 pixel weight equal to 25 pixel it is totally up to you yeah So this has got some padding, you see, and this is a spawn. Spawn is display in block. Okay, we're done with it. Okay. So you can also add a custom link like this, and I think you need to change padding to make it better so page link has something like this do we have do our item have any margin Font size, font face, line height. Why it is like this?
You see, it is not exactly centered. There is some extra space at the bottom. I think it is because of the page link. So when we get the computed, maybe we can see here. Let's see if there is some padding or margin. There is some padding. Okay. Okay, its border button is one pixel. Interesting. Why it has some different. Okay, so the item inside it is. No. It's so weird. I don't see what can be causing this extra space here. anyway uh, you can make it like this you can look for a solution to fix that as well it is possible probably instead of this maybe we can just put uh, our icon as an image let's try that so this is our image url and instead of spawn i will comment this out Let's put an image. I think this should mean to the root. Okay, the image is not working because we didn't set any width and height. Since it is uh, an SVG, we need to set width and height for it. And now it is working without any extra space here. However, it is right position, so you need to transform it if you want, like here. Okay. By the way, this inline uh, styling is not suggested. You should, instead of you should compose a class. Now it is looking almost as exactly the same as next okay 45.51 and this one is 44 so there is still a slight difference here which is caused by you see it's not equal I don't know. This image may have some padding or something. Maybe we need to change its size. For example, height is 26 pixel. Oh, no, I mean 24 pixel here. Uh, maybe 23 pixel. Yeah, it is exactly the same right now. Anyway, okay. You can also uh, style this link to padding zero, like style padding, or even we, instead of this, let's add a class as p zero. Okay, and when we remove padding, okay, where is it? Yeah, it becomes like this. So now that you can increase its image size to, for example, width 100% and height 100%. Actually, we can add a class for this, yes. Let's use the classes of 
bootstrap as we 108 so for hate 100 yeah here and let's refresh oh now it's taking too much space so where does this hate come from Mm. So one hundred weren't very good. I think we need to set still. Uh, maybe we can make twenty five first. Okay, we did spend too much time, so I am leaving that to you to find correct uh, styling. And yeah, you can also set the pagination size, like large, small, big. There's also alignment, justify content, center, you see, or justify content and okay then pop overs we have already see a small example of this i think i will end the lecture here so we will be needed to have lecture 17. it is already five hours okay so let's upload our lecture code There are also some helpers, utilities, extent, and about. Okay. Okay. Um, okay source code uploaded end of lecture 16 feel free to ask any questions that comes to your mind through our discord channel hopefully see you later